Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! A man who was accused of rape and faced at least 10 years in jail won't now face trial after the case dramatically collapsed in court. The case against Liam Allen, who's 22 and a criminology student, was dropped after it emerged that police had withheld around 40,000 messages from the complainant. The judge called for an investigation at the very highest level as prosecutors accused officers of sheer incompetence. Mr Allen said he felt betrayed by the very system which he felt would do the right thing. Well, I'm joined now by the prosecutor in the case, Barrister Jerry Hayes, and Mr Allen's defence lawyer, Julia Smart. Um, Mr Hayes, this is an extraordinary story. How did the case unravel? Well, this is an appalling lack of disclosure. The police don't seem to realise that they have a duty to disclose. Julia said to me when the trial had started, look, have you got a disc of the downloads from this girl's phone? I said, I haven't seen it. CPS haven't. I go and see the officer. Oh, yes, but it's clearly not disclosable. Really? So I do the two tests. One, is it capable of undermining the prosecution case? No, sir. Is it capable of assisting the defence case? No, sir. I was not happy with that. There were about 40,000 texts. We got an adjournment. Julia got to bed at about 4 o'clock the next That's morning fine. and saw stuff on there which really blew the prosecution case apart. So we adjourned the case and we made a decision to offer no evidence. But, you know, this was the 49th minute or oh, the 59th minute of the 11th hour. The system nearly failed. Julia Smart, your client must have been saying to you, obviously, I didn't do it, and, and that she phoned me, she said this, that, that would have proved his innocence. What were you going through in terms of thinking, you know, where are these messages? Well, so far as the defence were concerned, we were not aware until just before trial there was a download because we weren't told, and this was not noted by a police officer on the correct documentation that we received. Uh, when we became aware that there was a download, of course I made the application and, uh, and took it away, but by now the trial had begun. Uh, we had limited time, but I can say in the few hours that I had that disc with me, I discovered, as Jerry has told you, um, very many messages that were so fatally undermining of the prosecution case um, that I knew that it couldn't succeed. Uh, and what and did you think at that stage? <laughs> well, uh, as, a de as a defence barrister, you think this is gold dust for us, um, but on a more practical level, um, there is a young man of 22 who's been on bail now for two years, and I have to say, if the officer had looked at this downloaded material, when he had it, which was January 2016, as the judge said yesterday in open court, Liam Allen would never have been charged. Two Absolutely years on right. bail, yes. Yes. been made public, these Indeed. accusations against him. How has he coped? What toll has this taken on him? Uh, well, it's difficult to imagine what it must be like, knowing you are innocent of a crime, and a sexual crime, uh, and having a, a trial outstanding, um, not knowing whether you're going to be facing 10 years, 12 years in prison. And being on a sexual offenders register for the rest of your life. For the rest of his life. His life would effectively have been over. And yes. what's more, because there was no record of this disc anywhere, it would have disappeared into the ether. And if it came to an appeal, like you'd say, well, we're going to appeal this, where's the disc? We don't know anything about a Is disc. Is this a one-off in your experience? Oh, actually, no. There have been massive cuts. Uh, which have affected the criminal justice system, which is not just creaking, it's about to croak. I had a case a few months ago, again, I was prosecuting, it was firearms. We had what's called a, a streamlined forensic report where the officer said that this man's DNA was on the magazine. We checked it. It wasn't there at all. Why is this happening? Why did this happen in this case, in your view? Is it incompetence? Well, is it? Uh, it could be incompetence. Certainly, in order to look at all this material, it takes hours. But it has to be looked at, because otherwise there is no other way um, of ensuring that miscarriages of justice do not occur. So somebody has to sit down, laborious as it is, and look through these messages. And is it your understanding that it just wasn't looked at properly? It must have been looked at, because there were some messages that the prosecution, late in the day, were going to rely upon. How well it was looked at, I don't know.
This young man, as I say, these, offend these charges against him were made public. He was identified. Yeah. Of course, this will raise the spectre of the argument again about the question of anonymity. For I I've always people. argued that there should be. I think there should be a presumption of anyone who is accused of a sexual offence to be anonymous, unless the prosecution go to the judge and say, well, this is one of those cases where people won't come forward. Very I completely agree with Jerry. And very briefly, I mean, looking forward for, for Liam, how is he... What do you think the future holds? Is he still well, interested in working in a criminal justice system yeah. that arguably has treated him very poorly? Uh, well, he is. Um, he is due to take his finals, I know, in uh, May and June. Um, he is remaining <coughs> as stoical as one can about his experiences. Uh, and I know that he wants there to be a positive out of this, and he wants this never to happen to anybody and else. And he was very lucky to be represented by you. Well, thank you. Very nice way to end. Thank you very thank much, you. both of you. Well, in a statement, Scotland Yard said the Met is urgently reviewing this investigation and will be working with the Crown Prosecution Service to understand exactly what has happened. The Met understands the concerns that have been raised as a result of this case being dismissed from court and the ongoing review will seek to address those. Next, a 22-year-old student whose rape trial collapsed after detectives failed to disclose vital evidence to the defence has told this programme he wants an apology from the police and the CPS. Liam Allen was charged with 12 counts of rape and sexual assault, but his trial collapsed after police were ordered to hand over phone records. In an interview alongside his mum, Lorraine, Liam Allen tells us his life has been ripped apart by what happened to him. It emerged last week that the case against Mr Allen was dropped when evidence on a computer disk containing 40,000 text and WhatsApp messages revealed the alleged victim pestered him for casual sex. The Met Police say they're urgently reviewing the way the investigation was handled. I've been speaking to Liam and his mum and asked him if the police had been in touch with him since his case collapsed. There's been no direct contact. Nothing? No. What do you think of that? It's, it's disappointing. Um, naturally, obviously, it, it doesn't take too long to send an apology or anything like that, or just get in contact um, and let me know what's going on. But I do understand that you know you might want to not want to speak to me right now, given that they don't really know what's gone wrong in terms of completely as the whole system. So I do understand that they're reviewing things, and so I'm trying to be understanding in that respect. But that's what you would like. Really, an apology. Uh, yeah, an apology would be nice. Why is that important to you? It just. Yeah. I don't know, it sort of accepts responsibility, I suppose, from that point. And it does show remorse. Um, and I've seen a lot of people's comments on articles saying there's no remorse from the police or the CPS, but I know that there is, but obviously I can't prove it if I haven't had anything myself. You've had the weekend now to absorb what's happened to you. You could have been sent to jail for over a decade and you could have been on the sex offenders register for life. How are you feeling about it now? Um, I suppose there's relief on one side in terms of, you know, the, the case is over. Um, as in, I'm not, you know, the, the suspect or, or I'm not standing trial anymore. So there is relief there. With the publicity, I mean, it's been huge. Um, so there's a different kind of stress um, in terms of that now. Um, and there's still obviously another battle to go through in terms of compensation and, and suing, uh, going from there really. So there, are, there is, it's not over completely. It's just, I'm not the one standing trial anymore. What, would, what do you think would be adequate compensation for what you've endured? I wouldn't know. I mean, I've said this so many times that university is supposed to be like the best sort of years of your life. And the last two years I've just spent worrying and, and you know, not really concentrated on anything. Um, and so it has completely ripped apart my normal sort of personal life. And now that it's come to light, it's still going on. And obviously the longer we have to wait in terms of going for like, compensation and things like that, you know, the more stress it still is because I'm still away from uni, I'm still away from my normal life. Um, so everything's still upside down. Um, but as I said, I'm just not standing trial anymore, but there's still emotional stress there. Lorraine, how's it been for you as Liam's mum the last couple of years while Liam's been on bail? Difficult, difficult. I suppose that's a bit of an understatement. Um, you never want to see a child go through it. It's not something you could um, prevent. You know, you, could, you can educate your daughters, you know, the dangers of putting yourself in difficult positions, mm. things to be watch out for. You can educate your sons, as I feel I have, with respect and, and to be, you know, looking after people, not, not harming people. You can't protect yourself against something like this. Mm. You know, can, it, I think that was, th this is part of why 
it's felt by a lot of people, you know, and, and you see a lot of people saying it, it can happen to anyone. Um, there seems to be, there's a lot more than, you know, just text messages and things that were factors to the, the case. Um, you know, the, the amount of support, which I, which I found very overwhelming during the time, and, and even now, the support that we've had, I don't, there's no way we could have got through it without that. You, you as, a, as a woman, you do when someone comes that does this type of thing, your instinct is to want to believe because you, I think that's where I spent a lot of my time was trying to get my head around why, why would someone lie about this? Um, it, it just didn't make any sense at all. Um, obviously, they have their own reasons, um, but, but that was a real struggle. There, there were people that I knew that knew Liam w would automatically, you know, know and, and realise this, this doesn't seem possible. There are other people that, that don't know my son, that have only had my word, that if I, I wanted to, to say, you know, or talk about anything that we were going through, I, I would struggle a little bit because I felt that I would be putting them in an awkward position to make a judgment without any sort of basis to mm, it. Because any being a mum, yeah. you're going to protect your child. That's how everyone sees it. You know, it, in some ways I felt that even though I'm sitting there saying, I know it's not possible. This mm. is not my son. Everyone's just going to look at me and go, "Well, you're a mum." You of would say, you say that, that. Mm. Liam. You must have thought often about why this woman made up these allegations about you. Why? Why do you think? Um, from from what I can gather, um, part of it is spite. Um, but obviously, anything that I say is just speculating. Really, um, for me, I can't really comprehend why you'd want to do that to somebody in the first place. Anyways. Mm. But it seems it just started off as a little sort of white lie. Um, and then as soon as that starts, where it's so serious, it's not something you can go back on. Um, you know, we, we all make little white lies, in, in, but not on that scale, We're not on such a serious topic. Do you think she should be prosecuted for that? I'm going to leave that decision to somebody else, uh, if I'm honest. Um, you know, I'm not, I think I'm biased in terms of the emotional side of it. Um, and so it's not my decision to make from here. Um, that is somebody else's decision to make. To you, Lorraine. I think, I think, honestly, I think she may need help. Um, with, with all the things that we've seen, the support has been really positive for us. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, and seeing some of the comments that are so negative, I, I'm fearful for her. You have sympathy for her. There is sympathy there. Um, I know that sounds really strange. Um, I think. No, probably, you know, not through the case, not through the trial, no. Um, with the media attention has changed it a little bit. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to picture what, as a parent, either side of the fence, there is, there is pain, frustration. Um, she has a family. And I don't think anyone, for all the comments they make and judgments they make around these sort of cases, actually take into effect the impact that that has on everybody else around them. Why do you think the police and the CPS didn't disclose any of those 40,000 messages, uh, which, in the end, proved your innocence? I wouldn't know, I mean, why? Um, I mean, it could be a mistake. It, it, you know, it could have just been, you know, I haven't got enough time to read 47,000 messages. Which, you know, for me, with something this serious, with obviously other people who have gone through the same sort of thing, um, your life's on hold. So there isn't, you know, I'd quite have happily waited an extra month and gone, gone through it for an extra month if it meant that they would have read those properly because, you know, this could have all been avoided. It would have been an extra month of time to save another eight, nine months waiting for a trial. So, I mean, yeah, I think they're under a lot of pressure. Um, especially given how much media attention there is around the sort of topic. Um, but was, you don't think it was malicious? It, it, it's... I, I find it hard to believe that it was malicious. But thank goodness for the prosecuting barrister who was insistent that they should be disclosed in the end because he'd been fobbed off once. He'd been told that they, were, they weren't relevant or they weren't disclosable because they contained, quote, very personal material and they weren't relevant. There was nothing capable of undermining the prosecution case or assisting the defence. I mean, I think there's a lot of credit in terms of, this is why I consider myself lucky. Um, the judge 
I mean, he handled it so, so well um, in terms of from a neutral point of view. Um, and, and that was really nice to sort of see. You know, you don't feel quite so alone mm -hmm. in that respect. Um, obviously, the prosecutor that we got, you know, he was, he was extremely understanding in the respect that we should have that information. But I've, I've got to give full credit to, to my barrister, which is Julia Smart and um, Simone from, from my law, the law firm. Um, their, their persistence, you know, their, genuinely their work attitude has been absolutely amazing. I mean, the no, there's nobody else like them for, for me, um, and I do owe my life to them, uh, to them all, um, equally, to be fair. I'm just going to read a couple of those uh, messages out so our audience can see how vital they were to showing that you were completely innocent. Um, September 2015, your accuser sent a, a message to a female friend discussing her sex life with you. It wasn't against my will or anything. And another, uh, which was relevant, it's been reported because she'd claimed to the police that she didn't like being intimate with men. People need three things in life, food, water and sex. And another one, sometimes sex is the number one priority. I'm really not joking, to be honest. According to your solicitor, there could be other cases, there could be other miscarriages of justice. People in jail right now where evidence that could have proved their innocence hasn't been disclosed. I think, yeah, I mean, th you know, there's going to be... I think that's what I've said, you, you can't really stop false accusations. People do have a spiteful side. Um, and when people are hurt, they, they react in a way that you wouldn't really expect. Um, and so, you know, we rely on the procedure to find the right sort of things. And as far as I'm aware, if I've been through it, then I'm not the only one. Just because I'm the one in the media right now, that definitely doesn't mean I'm the only one that's been through it. Mm. So I think there are people going through it now. Um, and, you know, th that's the aim now, is just sort of, you know, the procedure may need to change um, in order to make sure that this doesn't happen again. But for the people that are going through it now, you know, can that change? Reviews of uh, other cases might happen. Um, yeah. But, you know, the, the first step is making sure that the procedure changes in the right direction so you know what you're looking for. And not just in sexual offences cases, but in all cases. Yeah, I mean, fall, fall, I mean, just to say there are a tiny percentage that, that are false allegations when it comes to crimes of a sexual offences nature. I want to read you a statement from the CPS. They say, we will now be conducting a management review together with the Metropolitan Police to examine the way in which the case was handled. What's your view of that? Um, to be fair, I've been quite sort of clear um, in this respect. I completely understand they have to do their internal investigations. I mean, there's some people that wouldn't have known about the case. They need to learn a lot about, you know, what went wrong, where did it go wrong. There, there's gaps everywhere. It isn't necessarily just disclosure. You know, the, that evidence was there for the whole process, so... Mm. But do you trust the CPS and the police doing their own review into what went wrong at the CPS and the police? Initially, yeah, um, but I, I mean, I've said it before, I'd, I'd love to sit down with them, um, you know, uh, maybe there's a few other people like me that, that would love to sit down with them and say, okay, you give us your step-by-step -step procedure um, and we'll compare it with what we went through and we can tell you exactly where the holes are from our personal experience, because, you know, there's going to be holes in other people's experiences that I wouldn't have experienced. Mm. So there are other people out there, um, you know, at the moment the spotlight is on obviously my case, but there, there are other voices out there. I mean, I've heard loads of other people's stories, so okay. you know, it's possible to sit us all down in the same room with the same sort of people and get the personal side of it as well as you know, the professional side from them. Liam and Lorraine Allen. This email from Mark, I have also been the victim of false rape allegations. As an adult with young children at the time, I was thrown out of my family home for the duration of the investigation, which lasted 18 months. I'm only allowed to see my children for one hour per week, supervised by family and child services in a tatty, dirty contact centre. I was plastered all over the local papers as a rapist with a huge photograph. It caused absolute panic amongst all families that knew me and in the school my children went to. During my three-day trial, I was again plastered all over the papers as a rapist and the story was repeated every hour on local radio. The fallout for me has been the loss of my family, marriage, home, business, friends and my children who will have nothing to do with me at all.